What is going on guys? It is midnight <laughs> in Norway. Uh, I'm on the Lifetin Islands. I've got a small group with me and the light is really nice. But as I mentioned on the first video from Norway, because the sun doesn't get low enough in the horizon, we're probably not gonna get epic light any of the days here. Good light, really good light, but never anything maybe like epic. So I think on today's video, I really wanna focus on nailing down really good compositions. You don't have the crutch of epic light for your landscape photography right now, so I'm gonna really work on having a really nice set of compositions. Here at Utaglev Beach, and hopefully this is where I'm gonna make my first photo. I mentioned on the first video uh, from Norway that I was gonna have a special guest YouTube star with me and uh, they couldn't make it, so instead I got James Popsis. Yeah, special yeah. guest is not, a, not a, <laughs> uh, a title I've been given before. No, if you don't know James's stuff, go check out his YouTube channel. It's funny, it's informative, it's good stuff. I think you guys will really like it. Um, yeah, I'm talking composition today. You got a tip, composition tip? Uh, remove, subtract rather than add. Always, always look to be uh, to be thinking about what you can take out of a photo, not what you can add in. I think it's a great tip. I think so often you kind of get to a location and you see a spot and you go, "That looks cool," and then you get there and you go, ah, "I wonder if I can add that." Yeah. Uh, and then by the end of it, you end up going so wide you shoot a 360 photo. So try to keep it simple. I think so. Yeah, keep it simple. Go follow this guy on YouTube. Let's go make this photo. Utaklev Beach is one of those classic landscape photography locations in Norway, but even with good light here, it's still a bit of a challenge. There's just a lot going on. Trying to follow James's advice and simplifying things is proving to be a little bit of a challenge, but I think I've found something. So when I'm working on a composition uh, for a landscape or a seascape like this, I'm looking for foreground way more than the background. I know, or at least I think, I know, the background's gonna be this big, awesome peak here. So what I tend to try to look for are leading lines, foreground elements that can work as anchors, things to place in the like thirds mark of the image or the golden rule mark of the image. And I'm really looking for foreground more than I am background. The background's easy, it doesn't move. So I've been spending some time walking up and down the beach and one of the participants here whose Instagram I'm gonna place in the bottom was shooting uh, this beautiful curve here and I took that shot and I stepped a little bit farther to the front and I have a really nice curve of this rock leading out towards the sea in the image and I used a three stop hard grad ND about a one second exposure and it's yeah it's quite nice. The seas are almost too calm though. It's like really, really calm. So I was hoping to get a bit more drama in the image, but I do think it works. It's such a weird situation being here at like one in the morning because we don't know when to leave. Like normally when you go shoot a sunset, you shoot the sunset, the light stops, you go home. But here, the sun doesn't set, it just hovers on the horizon. So we've been here for a solid hour and we don't know when we're supposed to leave because it's not like the light's getting worse. But I do think we are maybe gonna leave this location and either today we'll be at another location on this video or maybe tomorrow. So um, yeah, packing up and heading to the next spot.
The next day we drove through a lot of low level clouds and rain expecting good, but maybe not epic light. And so I planned on some other landscape photography tips like, don't worry too much about the ISO, shoot the mood. And find ways to dramatize scale. And then out of nowhere, this crazy light started to bust through some of the most iconic spots in the Lofoten Islands, and I totally forgot to tell you guys some of the other landscape photography tips like, fill the frame. Balance the image. Crop the image to tell more of a cohesive story. Find simplicity. And of course, just stand in really, really beautiful places. Amazingly, after driving away from Rhino with like 15 keeper images, the light decided it wasn't quite done. So apparently I lied when I said we wouldn't get epic light on this trip because it's uh, day two of the trip and we've just been running around shooting crazy, epic, beautiful light. We had uh, just amazing light at the classic view uh, at Hamnoi Bridge and now we're at another spot trying to capture some shots. So this video is called something like making photos even when you don't get epic light, but I guess it's all a lie because the light is epic. And uh, I'm gonna get the camera gear out again here and hopefully make another photo. This is just absolutely phenomenal light. Remember how when I said in Tromso, the sun never got to like below three fingers above the horizon? Well here, about 200 kilometers or two degrees latitude souther, souther, more south in Norway, the sun's now at about one finger from the horizon. So it's much closer to the horizon. And yes, you get that underglow light in the right situation. It's really beautiful. From a photography standpoint or from a technical standpoint, I've got two filters on. I've got a four stop um, reverse grad ND because the sun is so, so bright on the horizon right now. And then I've also got a two stop medium grad ND because the sand's really white and it's a little bit blown out with all the light. It's kind of a strange situation in that the sky is quite dark, the foreground's quite bright, and then the midground's really, really bright with the sun. So that's the way I'm combating and I'm shooting about F11 two seconds, getting a really nice sun star. You set my soul on fire You put my heart beat all the sun And it's coming out really, really nice. This is just, this has been a good day. I think I've gotten five photos in a span of like three hours and it's just been golden hour the whole time. Officially, golden hour starts at 10.30 at night and doesn't end until almost four in the morning. It's crazy. Like anything though, too much light isn't always a good thing. The images are almost too punchy here at the beach. So after taking another image full of color and light, I decided to end this epic six hour photography session with a pretty toned down black and white image. The thing about doing video is sometimes you start a video with an idea in mind and as the days go along just totally different things happen than you thought. So this video, as I mentioned, was going to be kind of about how to make cool photos even when the light's not perfect, but the light has been perfect. So it's kind of been a fail. The one, I guess, piece of advice I can really give you is that keep things simple. When the light's not good or actually even when the light is good, just keep things simple. I find so often everybody's really complicating shots. They're thinking about how many different rules of composition they can squeeze into one image rather than just really knocking down a really good, clean, simple image. So uh, in a place like this, in Norway, in Lofoten Islands, you've got just so many different things to put in your photo and sometimes it's overwhelming. So yeah, just keep it simple, stupid. And uh, that's it for today's video. I guess I'll see you in the next one.
Peace.